Hello Sharks, I am Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here with another hand from the $10,000 buy-in final table of the GG Millions, the $10,000 buy-in tournament that takes place every week on GG Poker. If you all are enjoying these hands from the high stakes, featuring some of the best players in the world, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button below. Also, click the notification bell, that way I know that you all enjoy this. Also, let me know in the comments, I never know. If you have any ideas for content, anything you love, anything you don't like, let me know. I am happy to continue to iterate to give you the best possible content here on youtube.com slash poker coaching. All right, we are heads up. The winner of this hand will go on to win the tournament. We are playing about, what is this? 25 big blinds deep, give or take. Benjamin Roll, Ben CB, good, strong player. Also, Fiesta Pagano. Both these players have been around for a while, although neither of them have had great success in exactly the GG Millions. Um, that said, they are, well, heads up, so that's going to change for both of them today. They both have about $3 million in caches on GG, so good, strong regulars. Here, Benjamin limps. Fiesta checks the 8-5 offsuit, perfectly fine and standard. Um, you may ask, why limp with pocket aces? Well, because you don't really care if your opponent sees the flop, right? You want your opponent in there when you're playing relatively shallow stacked with pocket aces. You also want to be able to have a limping range that can conceivably limp fold to a big raise size. And if you are ever limping anything besides, well, exactly aces, then it's nice to have the aces in your range, right? If you want to be limping with marginal hands that you don't especially want to raise and get jammed with, then it's nice to mix up your play and protect your limping range by having aces in it. Anyway, flop comes, queen, five, three, two hearts, giving Fiesta a middle pair, Benjamin the ace and the ace, no heart, check, min bet on the flop, perfectly fine and standard, Fiesta has to call, of course. There's no point in raising here, some people might say you should raise because you want to get protection, because you probably have the best hand, but if you check raise here and get action, you're usually going to be against a better hand or a draw, which means you're in bad shape, so easy, easy check call there. Turns a jack, pretty rough card for Fiesta's 8-5 offsuit. Benjamin should certainly keep betting. Ideally using a pretty big size so that he can then make a pretty big river bet. Notice here, he opts to go big, about the size of the pot, actually a little bit more. Um, this is fine. I mean, he wants to be able to shove river. He can also make this play with some low equity draws and also really high equity draws. That way, when he's betting with a hand like pocket aces or ace queen or king queen he just gets full maximum value from the worst mate hands and he also forces fiesta pagana to guess some guess sometimes right like imagine if he's ever doing this with a hand like nine eight right maybe a hand like king nine these are hands that can conceivably bet big and then if you get jammed you can easily fold right but if you're betting hands like aces and King nine, it puts your opponent in a pretty tough spot where they don't know if you have a really good hand or a really bad hand, and that is good. That makes them fold out hands that have decent equity. Now, should this 8-5 fold? Mm, probably not. I think 8-5 is just a little bit too good to fold in this scenario. So I think you just have to call. I mean, it's unfortunate. To be fair, like if you ran this to a solver, it could very easily say this 8-5 is just a fold. Like fives with no additional equity whatsoever probably okay to fold but whatever calls fine too as on the flop you don't really want to raise because if you raise and get called it's pretty tough three seconds on his time bank you better hurry fiesta don't run out of time river is the ten of clubs seems like a spot where fiesta is going to check and now benjamin has to decide how much to bet Ten's actually not all that great for him right because random queen 10 gets there random jack 10 back door draw gets there etc Maybe even no backdoor draw. What should Benjamin do in this spot? I want you to take a second and think about how much Benjamin should bet, even if he should bet. In this scenario, should he check? Should he bet small, like 600,000? Should he bet medium, like 1.3 million? Or should he bet big, all of it? I want you to take a second, think about it, pause the video, and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, this is a nasty one because the 10 actually is very, very bad. However, aces are almost certainly still the best hand, right? It's very easy for Fiesta to have a queen, somewhat easy to have a jack, somewhat easy to have a 10, although probably not a ton of 10s. It's very easy to have a five. 
And I think given Benjamin's trying to get value from a lot of the non-obviously strong hands, like a five, I think he probably wants to go for a non-all-in bet. If this river was a little bit more of a blank, like random seven, then I think an all-in would be just very good in standard because then a queen will call every time, a jack will call every time. But here, I'm not so sure that is the case. So I think the right players to go something like 1.2 million and then go from there. This is definitely a dicey scenario, though. Let's see what he does. He's giving it some thought, giving it some thought. Probably figuring out this 10's not very good either. And he does go for the non-all-in size. 1 million into 1.8 million, or 1.9 million. Odor Fiesta, I'd probably just fold. Time bank's running out, you better hurry. What do you do when the time bank's running out? Do you go all in with the middle pair? That's what Fiesta does, rips it all in. Back over to Benjamin, goodness gracious. Now he has to put in 1.7, pot got all convoluted here, to try to win a total of What's this? 54. So he needs to be good one-sixth of the time. Does that sound right? I think that's right. Maybe a little bit more. One-fifth of the time. Something like that. Confuse me with this gigantic pot size. He doesn't need to win all that often. But is his opponent ever bluffing? And I think the answer is uh, probably yes. Fiesta Pagana is good, strong, battling player. All the draws missed. Well, some of the draws missed. The problem, though, is that would Fiesta actually shove here in this scenario, presuming he has to have relatively little fold equity? Unless, of course, he knows Benjamin will bet hands like this or king-queen and then find a fold to a shove. If that's the case, then I think you just have to find a call. Um, it's very important for Benjamin to consider his range here, too, because he may actually just like shove it all in with hands like jack-10 or ace-queen on the river. And if that's the case, this may be one of the best hands in his range when he plays it for this non-all-in size on the river. So this is a dicey spot where who knows what the ranges at play are, but they are going to be very, very, very relevant when determining if this is a spot where you can call it off or not. Because imagine Benjamin's playing something like, I don't know, all hands king, queen, and better this way. Maybe queen, nine, and better. If that's the case, then like folding aces at least becomes somewhat reasonable. But really, like, what are we losing to? We're just losing to, like, sets in two pairs. And you have to think sets in two pairs would actually be a little bit concerned with jamming because Benjamin can clearly just have ace-king sometimes or knight-eight sometimes or king-nine sometimes, right? Remember, that was a hand we listed on the turn, king-nine, very clear hand to take this same line with. So for that reason, I think Fiesta has to be a little bit cautious unless he knows that Benjamin shoves those hands, the straights, in which case that makes his range a little bit weaker. If it makes his range a little bit weaker, then aces is probably a call. But if his range is very strong, maybe you can fold the aces. That said, you all know me. I'm not folding the aces heads up. Benjamin gives us some thought. Gives us some thought. Gives us some thought. What do you all do here? Write it in the comment section while we're waiting on Benjamin to figure it out. Do we call or do we fold? Cards are up. Everybody in the YouTube comments calls, I'm sure. <laughs> Shout out to everyone in the YouTube comments. Hope you're having a great day. Giving it some thought, giving it some thought, giving it some thought. He conserved his time bank, unlike Fiesta Pagano, who ran out. <laughs> Ooh, it's scary to run out of your time bank heads up. I know that much. It'll all be over soon. And Benjamin folds on the river, awarding the pot and shortly after the whole tournament to Fiesta Pagana. Congrats to both of these players on the very nice run. I am um, surprised at that fold, but you will find that some world-class players make folds like this. I don't gonna say on a regular basis, but like in spots where they think it's good, right? Like imagine he thinks Fiesta's basically never bluffing. You should fold, right? Because if it's only value, what's value, value betting here? Is he really jamming Queen nine, king queen, probably not, right? If that's the case, then you just lose. I personally have a difficult time trying to narrow my opponent's range that much. And um, maybe I should just get over that. Maybe I, I have to trust the reads a little bit more. That said, sometimes you make big folds like this and it does not work out. But hey, 
if it's good more than one fifth of the time or one sixth of the time, whatever we figured out it was, then, uh, well, you print money doing it, right? It's hard to be right all that often. Good luck in your games. Have fun. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button and the notification bell. Have a great, great week. I hope all of you get heads up like these two players. And I hope you run hot and win. Yeah, I'm talking to you.